Yeah, you sound, you sound yep. very good. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. How's life, everybody? That's three today. No, Lee's hopping on in a minute. Okay. Good. Um, We're just discussing, you know. it's uh, For those of you who are joining us, you have gone to the LouisvilleAnswers.com link to take you to our radio show, rebroadcast. Randy, you're coming to us from where today? I'm at my house and soon to leave. At your house. Okie dokie. Well, my um, my trip, I'm telling you, was just spectacular. spectacular. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good. I got a lot of stuff. You got uh, projections for 2021 for the show for interest rates? Uh, yes. I, I got mean, stuff they think here. they might move a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah. Yep. We hit a low, according to my research, of uh, 2.78. Oh, there's Lee. There's uh-huh. Lee. And it's popped up a little. Um, Hello? Lee! Hey, you sound Hi, good. Lee. Where are you? Are you there, Lee? Yes, are. I'm here. Are you going to put video on or you know? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah. 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 What's There's fun? my video. Howdy, howdy. Good, good for you, girl. Good, good, good. I am. How, how does it know? That's pretty cool that this knows. What? That it just knows to pop up my timer at this time. Just weird. Okay. All right, everybody ready? We rocking yep. and rolling? Oh, yes, sir. Lee, good to see you. Rock, Mr. Rocky, you are not showing video. I am now. These we've got we've got questions as well, so we got a lot of stuff going. Stand by, everybody. Uh, let me get rid of uh, the input of this call. The emails coming in. Okay, stand by. Here we go. <clears throat> News Radio eight forty W H A S. Good Sunday morning, Bob Sekolder and the Louisville Real Estate Show back with you. Until the top of the hour, hope you're having a great post-Thanksgiving Sunday and you're not overwhelmed with the amount of turkey that you've been eating. Here with us, joining us on today's show, Randy Rocky, who is the co-owner of Swan Financial. They do a great job getting loans closed. You can reach Randy and his team at 6450736. Good morning, Randy. Also here, Lee Harris, Legal Counsel, Times Limestone Title and Escrow. I was just over with your folks uh, this past Wednesday morning for a closing. You can reach uh, Lee directly at 649-7964. Good to have you here, Lee. Thank you. My son, Greg, uh, who does our marketing and photography and so much more. Good yeah. to see you. Yep. Yeah, it's good to be here. And uh, then you can reach me, Bob Sekolder, anytime at 376-5483. We're continually looking for homes to list. and then also. If you are looking to buy a home, we've got plenty of agents ready to help you. All right, just a, a recap that the inventory is very sh- slow, is very low. Uh, compared to years past, more buyer activity. Can we all agree about uh, on that? Brandy, let's start with you because you're the one who sees them uh, after we do as real estate agents, but then we, you're the one who's the next in line to get the people pre-approved. How's your business doing this year as compared to the year before? Uh, it's up about thirty-five uh, percent, and uh, we're projected to go up another twenty-five uh, percent. We did about two hundred and twenty million last year, and we're going to do over three hundred million in loan volume this year, wow. and uh, by the end of the year, and we're projected to do four hundred million next year. <laughs> Lee, how about yourself on the closing side? How is Limestone doing? And other closers compared to around this year compared to last year? Oh. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's 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 way above what it was last year, and way above what we projected. So, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's amazing. Rates, uh, plus, I guess a little COVID uh, cabin fever. People yeah. want yeah. to move, 
Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I just saw an article come through that saying uh, negative interest rates are right around the corner and that they're going to keep, I mean, people might be refining again that have already refined this year. Now, I don't know if, if Randy, if you've heard anything or what, what you can speak on, but I, this was coming from some pretty big, uh, one of the Wall Street Journal articles that I was reading through that, that say it's coming. I don't, you know. Well, let's, let's get to um, uh, interest rates in a second. Let me just follow my game plan here. Uh, according to a, a Business First article this past week, nearly 26% of Louisville homes that sold in September traded uh, above their list price, with the medium sale prices clocking in about what 10000 above the initial price. That's according to a new Zillow study. Um, I got to take issue with uh, Business First because they don't really talk about appraisers who have pretty much put the kibosh mm-hmm. on um, – on appraisals here in the Louisville area, if you're overpriced um, and they feel you're overpriced, we had one jump back at us uh, with a twenty-seven thousand dollar problem. So we got it worked out, but the appraiser says we had it listed and we have a contract on it for twenty-seven thousand more than what the what he the appraiser or she feels it was worth. That that's a problem, no matter which way you cut it. So to give, give folks a, um, and Marty over at Business First, just to tell you, there's a bigger story here with regards to appraisals. I'm not sure you even touched on that. But w- we really do see, need to see some sort of um, come to terms with how do you handle this. Uh, and, and on one hand, appraisers have got a tough job. Um, look at other cities, and we've talked about this, and the appraisal numbers are, are they're not kept in check, and we see the cost of homes go sky high. But uh, here in Louisville, we're kept to a 3 or 4% appreciation. So that said, let's move into what's driving all of this business that Lee's talking about, Randy's talking about, Greg's talking about. And it all comes down to the start with interest rates. And interest rates are low. Randy, how would you sum it up in terms of where you've seen interest rates and where they're going in your mind? Uh, interest rates are about a point lower than last year. You know, your uh, NML, so NMLS number 26362, they, um, APRs are running, you know, in the uh, um, high twos to the low twos, depending on, you know, a 15-year or 30-year mortgage. Um, and my forecasters don't see them moving very much next year uh, um, um, at this point. But, you know, this year they thought they would move and they didn't. They went down. Yeah, so yeah. you know, we'll, 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 time will tell. Just, and just to recap, uh, and I love it. Whenever Randy talks about interest rates, he has to give his M M N L S N M N M N M L S number. So he'll be sitting at a dinner, and you'll ask him about interest rates, and he just starts blurting out. His, <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding on that. But he does get to give that out. So just in case to recap, everybody and Lee and. Uh, and Randy, we started the year off back in uh, January, uh, pre-COVID announcement um, at uh, 3.70. We we went down. Uh, it went back up again in March, mm-hmm. and back down mm-hmm. again. Yep. And then the Fed. That was when yes. the this. So this the crucial piece. I think is the Fed is still buying bonds at an unlimited rate. Right? Correct. They haven't stopped doing this. Correct. If, if, to my understanding. So until they. That do, is correct. Until they do, they're creating, you know, and again, you got to, I'm a big picture guy, you know, Bob, you know, I, sometimes I go off the rails and people are like, what the heck are you talking about? But you got to look at the bigger picture of what the, the government's doing to affect the housing market and try to hedge your bets on the future of what's going to happen. And I, I'm not saying that I know, but I'm just saying, look at the big picture, look at what the Fed's doing, watch when they stop doing that. Then maybe we'll see and look and see if you know inventory is tied to that because now people, what do they want people to be doing? So just keep a lookout. Do we have any in anticipation of what uh, President Elect Biden will do once he's in in office with uh, the Fed? Any idea? No, I guess that's a no based on. I mean, you talk. just yeah. you just kind of wait you, at, at yeah. this point. I no, think I it's all based yeah. off of the. We're also everyone's waiting for you know the vaccine. You know. So we we saw rates come down last month and they popped up a little. Uh, probably 2.78, and we're up about maybe three, 2.90 thereabouts. That's uh, for good in, for good credit. The projections, and this is where I think people are waiting to hear. So for um, the fourth quarter, which we're in right now, we're pretty much uh, seeing across the board staying where we are. But in quarter one, 
Uh, Freddie Mac is at 3.0. Fannie Mae drops to 2.8. These are their mm-hmm. predictions. Mm-hmm. The Mortgage Broker Association goes to 3.1. The National Association of Realtors is uh, 3.1. But the average, if you look for quarter one, two, and three, the average stays at about 3 percent the entire much of the uh, 2021 which will drive more buyers into the market and that's where we we find our next section here and that is is what's going to happen with buyer activity the homes that are out there uh, we're at a little under 2,000 homes this past week on the market and even typically now we normally would see three or four thousand on the market wow so, think about, think yeah. about this, and this, you know, I love making my predictions. I, I did have, I was talking about my Nike check if we've, we've uh, episodes past, but think about all the people who are on pause, maybe unemployed, maybe furloughed. Once everything starts to get rolling again, if interest rates stay this low with inventory as tight as it is, what happens when these people start getting good paying jobs, solid, you know, solid requisites yeah. so where they yeah. can go now buy a home and they flood the market could be, well, could be a wild ride. I, I saw an answer to that. I saw that um, new construction pre-orders are up dramatically. Absolutely. Uh, and these are not people who have actually started digging in the dirt in terms of builders. They're just taking orders right now for Lock next year. Lock deposits and, and yeah. checking lumber so, prices. And, and that's and, the problem. The lumber <laughs> prices are up. So we're going to see possibly higher priced homes. But the bottom line is I think uh, new construction is uh, going to wave, ride this amazing wave in, in – in the next couple of um, uh, years. Let's uh, get some well, questions. We need, yeah, we ahead, need uh, r- real quick, we need 1.6 million new construction homes a year, Bob, and right now they're only constructing 1 million across the country. Mm. And they can't really bounce it up to what the need is because they don't have the number of workers trades available right now, right? Isn't that the limiting part? Very, part uh, of very, it's a, that's a great point. That and land and cost and all the above, and then you know, Perfect still storm. people being scared. They would go back to two thousand eight. I mean, there are so many factors. Yes, but you know, that is the big one. I agree. We just sold property that it's under contract right now, that is being purchased by a developer who's going to uh, put a number of homes on this land. Just to give you an idea, the 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 folks who are in charge of finding acquisition for. The builders are just trying to scurry. And by the way, if you're listening and you have property that you want to sell, mm-hmm. please don't hesitate to call me at 376-5483, a shameless plug there. But certainly we can... Uh, if you're out there, we got builders who want land. So yeah, we got we got plenty of builders and we got, if you got the land, we got the people to help get that deal going. Let me get a question in uh, for Lee. Um, what we're trying to do is mix in questions that we would normally put on the air, but because we're... Um, we're, t- we're doing this via Zoom, the, the show, uh, until we're allowed back in the studio, we have no way of inputting these questions live. So I basically have written these down. So just understand we're operating and have continued to operate since. Uh, we're just flowing like water, baby. Just H- go with the flow. Since HAS closed down the studios for the <laughs> most part, we're doing these via Zooms from our individual locations. So Lee, uh, Bill writes in, we recently purchased a home contingent on a home inspection. The home inspection revealed structural water damage to the floor joists, basement dampness, and small leaks in the roof. And uh, they, the Bill and his family want to terminate the agreement, but the seller is willing to make repairs. And additionally, the seller never disclosed the existence of these problems. And Bill mm-hmm. wants to know, how can Bill break the deal? Your thoughts. Okay, well, uh, under the Louisville contract, um, if the buyer is within their uh, inspection time frame and they've received an inspection report, they can cancel the contract because of that. No ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, if they have be- gone beyond that time frame, then they have to negotiate, and uh, the seller and the buyer would have to negotiate the repairs. And if the seller's willing to repair all of those items, then you know the buyer could accept that. Uh, but if they uh, don't, then they have to do what's called a last, best, and final offer. You were repair X, Y, and Z. And if seller and buyer don't agree on that, then they can terminate and the buyer will get their money back. 
So I have to presume that they're still within the inspection time period based on what Bill's writing here because he hasn't said they're past that. So mm -hmm. what you're saying in a nutshell is they could just say we're out regardless of what the seller says that they're going to, to do. Right. If they're within the uh, inspection time frame, they can walk for any reason. Well, even if not the inspection time frame, didn't didn't I catch you say that they didn't disclose they didn't disclose the leak? What was the Yeah, this, he says that the seller never disclosed the existence of the problems. Right. To begin so, with. So, so is that if it's yeah. on, not on the disclosure that's already signed, say let's say Lee that they're outside of their inspection period, um, they or they're negotiating inspections and they decided to say, Oh, we will but they didn't disclose the depth of it in the disclosure. Where would that, I guess they should have probably backed out before anyway. So they're catching it before the, it's a good thing they're well, catching it. Well, I mean, if, if you have a disclosure issue, that's a totally different issue, which is, uh, you know, you, you defrauded me or misrepresented, you know, the property. Uh, at, and, and that's a totally uh, different legal issue. But uh, the contract says you can walk away during the inspection period for any reason, as long as you've had an inspection by a licensed inspector and received a report. If it's beyond that and you've negotiated, uh, then if you can't come to a final, last, best and final offer, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, the, the buyer can terminate at that point. Yeah, uh, uh, we and, should. And then after that, if they find out that the seller has failed to disclose something, and they end up purchasing the property, property, then you know they still have rights uh, because the seller is just is uh, required under Kentucky law to disclose any defects. And the buyer has the option of uh, filing either small claims or a lawsuit uh, a year or within a year of when they would have found out about the problems from the date of closing, which brings up a very good point for everybody who's listening. And that point is make sure you disclose everything you know about the house so you can sleep uh, every night and not worry about it coming back on you. Am I correct on that? Lee? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole point of the disclosure form is to disclose what you know, it's in writing. Um, and no one can ever say I didn't disclose it. Right. Yep. If yep. you, if you don't, um, then you're, you know, you're asking for legal action. They yeah. could come back at you. All right. We're going to thank you. Lee. We're going to take a break and we'll come back with more questions and more insight as to what's happening with uh, the real estate industry in both Louisville and Southern Indiana. And something I think you'll find interesting when we come back a question, the great real estate debate, do you put a living, a TV in your living room? We're going to review and see what some of the experts say, including our panel. Here with us, we've got Lee Harris, legal counsel, Limestone Title and Escrow. You can reach her and everybody else over there at Limestone at 649-7964. And I will tell you, they have some amazing cookies that they give out at those closings. Also, Randy Rocky, Swan Financial. You can reach Randy anytime at 645-0736. My son, Greg, who does our marketing and our pictures and photography. And you can reach me anytime. We'd love to talk to you at 376-5483. And if you want to see what sellers are saying about us, head to louisvillesellerstalk.com or you can go to louisvillezillow.com and read what sellers and buyers are saying about us as well. We are back in a moment on News Radio 840 WHAS. News Radio 840 WHAS, Bob Sekoler, the Louisville Real Estate Show, here to you until the top of the hour. With us, Randy Rocky, Swan Financial, 645-0736. Lee Harris, Legal Counsel, Limestone Title and Escrow at 649-7964. My son, Greg, who does all of our marketing and photography and so much more. And I'm Bob Sekoler, as I said, 376-5483. Thank you, Barbara Corcoran, by the way who's a mentor, and uh, we do appreciate all the advice that we get from Barbara. And if you'd like to see a rebroadcast of today's show, you can head to louisvilleanswers.com. That's louisvilleanswers.com. That will take you to our replay on YouTube. All right. So the question is, do you put a TV in the living room? Let's start with Lee. Do you have a TV in your living room right now? No, no. None. How about nope. in your bedroom? Yes. Okay. Randy Rocky, 
TV in your living room. I have it in both living rooms and both bedrooms. There you go. <laughs> and Greg, you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm the same way. I've got living room, bedrooms. So if you could have two, I've known people that have more than one. One of my one of my friends has the whole like you know sports setup with the one seventy five inch and then a couple fifty five. <laughs> it's like three of them on top of it. It's 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 magnificent. I must say. Well, you want to you want to watch your TV placement when staging a home. Real estate professionals faced with the issue are divided when it comes to where in the living room a TV should go, or even whether it belongs there at all. Uh, one real estate agent told uh, one group saying that the TV setup feels wrong. Buyers would could and would be turned off by the space if there's a TV in the living room. After all, buyers want to visualize themselves inside a home, and watching TV is a big part of many people many people's lives. On the other hand, another real estate agent in New York says doesn't see the doesn't see the presence of a TV as a critical matter when staging a space. TV shouldn't be the focus, she says. While some think keeping a television in the room and living room at an open house is crucial, others say it takes away from the taste of the home. I've got, I've got the simple answer on this So one. do I. I know I why. You know, okay, let's see. You go first. Let me see if it's the same thing. You, you, you say what you know it is. Uh, no, I'll tell you what I th the solution is. It's a very simple solution. So most TVs now, the TVs that now have the ability to take a um, the only one seeing a, Bob. A, there, wait, no, you froze up. Okay, you're back oh, now. Let's start okay, off. the you old, tell me, you tell me first. Yeah, uh, uh, there, my thing is telling me internet connection unstable. So that's going to be great for a radio show. A uh, thumb drive back of the TV pictures of your family or flowers or scenery. No, that's good. No, what, what, yeah. my, what my thinking is, here's the reason that the, that real estate agents are divided, okay, is because there's an age bracket here. Some agents are thinking about, and as a photographer, I run into this. You go yeah. into a room or a house where you have the old, big, square TVs. Those are unsightly. Get those out. I, I, I sit in that camp. If you have, if you're showing your home or you're listing your home, the big TVs that are on the corner of a piece of furniture when you go into a room that obstruct yeah, view and right. don't show wide open, a big TV in the living room. But if you have one of these new flat screen LED TVs that's hung properly with the wires hidden, it yeah. doesn't matter. And as a matter of fact, it looks more uh, in my more more modern in my if if you really if you're really asking it, people don't want necessarily a dated look. So if you have it updated, if you can, okay, I get that. You know, Black Friday's coming up. There's some great deals everywhere. Um, but upgrade your TV. It's the old TVs that are the problem, not the new ones. Yeah, that's my piece. Okay, well, I say the solution is if you want your TV in the living room and maybe your partner doesn't want a TV in the living room, how about this? You just put pictures on the TV that show, and some of these TVs automatically do it. Some of them you can uh, like use a picture a service. Frame. Yeah, much like a picture frame. So you just either run pictures of your family and trips or photography, pictures that you've taken or that you can use, and it becomes a piece of artwork. Well, there are TVs out there. There's a couple of brands that yeah. make, they're called like this. I think Sony makes a frame. It's called The Frame. Frame. And it's actually, re they have to special it recessed into the wall, but it literally, my, uh, my wife's uh, aunt and uncle have it. It looks like a piece of beautiful artwork you'd see in a museum, and you yep. can change a couple of different, and it's gorgeous. So oh, just cool. you never, you yeah. never know it was a TV unless you turned it on. Honestly, that is wild. Yeah. I had no idea that was uh, out there. Pretty yeah, cool. cool. All right, moving on. You may not know this, folks, but your house may be high on a buyer wish list this holiday season. As we head towards the holidays, just understand buyers are active right now. Mortgage rates, Randy, would you say are historically low? Better than we've seen in yes. a long time, right? We're still in an amazing yes, they are. position. And, Amazing position. Yes. And that there's more money over the – people have more money than ever before. They've been banking money. Equity. Pur purchasers are looking for homes for the holidays, especially to ex expand or contract. And then you can uh, restrict showings in your house if that's what you're concerned about with COVID-19 or just during holiday time. We have, can show you the way to – really cut back on the showings and make it uh, on your schedule. Homes are decorated for the holiday. That's going to appeal for a lot of buyers. There's also minimal competition for you as a seller. You know, there are so fewer homes on the market that if you drive around, have Lee, have you and Randy drive, drove around and can you see that there are fewer for sale signs out there 
than in the summertime and uh, and spring? Have, are you able to see that? Because there are fewer signs out there. So if you're thinking about selling or just in the back of your mind and thinking this may not be the time, more than ever, this may be the year it takes, it makes sense for you to uh, list your home during this time of the year as opposed to later in uh, next year in 2021, which should still be strong, but it comes down to your schedule. Lee, question coming in. Doris has asked, uh, she's heard terms of color of title, cloud over title, other colorful phrases about the title. How do they impact the title? Uh, well, anything that's color of title or cloud on title, it means that there is an encroachment or an easement or a, a, a loan that hasn't been paid off or some kind of lien. Uh, any of that. It means that the title is not clear, mm -hmm. um, but uh, what happens when you purchase a house is you uh, obtain a title company or a title closer who is going to run the title, and they're going to find out if there's any kind of uh, lien or other encroachment on the title, and that will be cleared up before the closing. And so once the closing happens, um, all of that will be cleared up, of course, owners can uh, purchase an owner's policy in case there's some kind of crazy uh, issue that uh, wasn't found in that search. And then that owner's policy will cover the buyer for any uh, issue that comes up in the future. Yeah, we always suggest that owner's title, you have to get mortgage title insurance, but owner's absolutely. title is, is important. Randy, absolutely. we've got... Um, Gertrude has asking, so she's buying her first home, not familiar mm -hmm. with the, um, the process of applying for a loan. What documents does Gertrude have to uh, bring to you or via phone or Zoom in order to ap apply for a mortgage? Yeah, um, uh, there are two most recent pay stubs, uh, W-2s. Uh, what money they made the last two years and what assets they currently have uh, for the down payment, if they're going to do a down payment. And if they make under $76,000 in income, there's a tax credit that's absolutely incredible that uh, can save them several thousand dollars over the life of the loan. So uh, that, that would go into play on a first time home buyer or someone that has to bought a house in three years. So let, let's delve into this just a little bit more. For anybody who is buying or has bought or plans on buying, that pretty much covers everybody. And if, mm -hmm. you, <laughs> if you've submitted this, and I'm not saying to Swan, I'm just saying in general to a, a lending right. institution. Right. You submitted it, and then all of a sudden, a day or so before closing, you get um, a call or email from your loan officer mm -hmm. and says, hey, we need this, and you've already sent it. So what is the uh -huh. reason? Are, are you looking, uh, not you, but in general, are mortgage companies, banks, lending institutions looking for updated information like a pay stub or uh, checking account, uh, savings account? Are they looking for something new or have they misplaced what you originally sent? Well, with the loan volume being at record high right now, there's a lot of misplacement. Um, um, and, and, Really, that's most of the time what has happened. You know, it's not that it's it's floating in the air somewhere. It's just that they have not organized the file well enough that they just want to get that information uh, quickly. So then they call our processing team, and the underwriter does, and 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 we get that information to them. Usually, and, that's the case. And again, I'm not talking about your people in particular. I'm just saying in general mm -hmm. because often we see because I represent so many sellers we see a delay from the buyer's side because of what is been termed from an underwriter that they're looking for more information. And that sends a chill down every seller's spine, not to mention a buyer thinking that they something is wrong. Yeah, I would think in the, there's something that needs you to be You are correct. Yeah. It's a great point and it's worse than it has been in a long time. And the overlays as we call them in, uh, all the things that go into play to get a loan sold off or cl clear to close or closed is it's tough for a lot of situations. We have navigated those waters very well. Yeah. And uh, during COVID, uh, as you well know, Bob, we were, we were rolling right along. Now we had a little bit of a delay for about a month, month and a half when mm -hmm. it first started because of the 
chaos of people having to work from home and all that, but um, not anything that was unmanageable. And uh, I'm very proud of that with our team because it was uh, it was tough waters to navigate for a while. Got it. Got it. We are out of time. By the way, next week we should tell you, what is the first room burglars check for valuables if they break in? I have personal experience. I'll share that with you. And, uh-huh. uh, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I do. Uh, we uh-huh. thank you. Yeah. Randy Rocky. We'll talk about that. Randy Rocky, Swan Financial, 6450736. Thank you for being here, sir. Always appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. And Lee Harris, Legal Counsel, Limestone Title and Escrow. They do a great job over there at Limestone. Make sure you Thank check you. out their cookies. Yes, indeed. You can reach Lee at 649-7964. Thanks, Lee. And my son, Greg, who does our marketing and photography and so much more. And we hope you had a great holiday weekend. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. right here on News Radio 840 WHAS. All right, guys. Uh, thank you all. Let me add one thing. And I'm Bob Sokoler. You can reach me anytime at 376-5483. So I'll edit that into the middle because I forgot to add that at the end there. Oh, they got to have it. Got to have that. Yeah. All right, gang. Happy Thanksgiving to all you all. You, you too. Well. Yep. Thanksgiving. All right, gang. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you later. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.